welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and today I'm going to talk about Momo, the Missouri Monster. This film is released on September 20th, and it is very different in the way it is shot. I thought it was really interesting. It's both part a documentary, maybe mockumentary, as well as an unreleased 70s grindhouse film that they allude to was specifically made for kind of the, you know, the drive-in scene. So it does start out with our narrator, who is Blackburn of Blackburn's Cryptid Case Files, I believe, who is talking about the legend of Momo. He's in Missouri. He is speaking to the locals who had family or, you know, lived with the people who dealt with the monster. Part you know, urban legend, maybe paranormal, maybe alien kind of creature. We get to hear all of these secondhand, thirdhand, quote unquote, eyewitness stories from all of these people giving us a little background as to who saw Momo first, a little history about him, a little history about the town itself. And while this is happening, they're simultaneously playing the 70s unreleased Momo film, which is very loosely based off of the possibly factual true-to-life tales that we're hearing. I'm going to leave it off there as it is spoiler-free. I really thought it was interesting how this was done. I've never seen a film that has, you know, that TV vibe of like the cold case files and paranormal, you know, whatever to it also simultaneously having the film so you're going through all of these interviews with locals while the same part in the movie's happening and it is you know it's it's not an actual 70s film it's very obviously shot now but they aged the the way the film looks to make it more grindhousey which was neat i did enjoy that effect um I really did enjoy the narrator himself, Blackburn. I thought he did a really good job. He definitely had that vibe of the TV host to him, which was very cool. Pulled it off really well. Um, I really enjoyed the creature design for Momo himself. Being as no one actually had hard proof of what he looked like, it was all just people describing what they saw when they looked out a window or perhaps they were walking on a trail. I thought they had a really good representation of something that's supposed to look kind of big footy but only have three toes but very hairy and apparently very 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 smelly smells like death is what they said kind of makes me think of my dog but uh i enjoyed the creature design i enjoyed the grindhousey feel to it i enjoyed that the blend the blend of you know the factual quote unquote stuff and the film what did I dislike about this movie? I felt as though the pacing could definitely be worked on. I think in total the movie was over an hour and 20 minutes, so it was a bit hard to, you know, it honestly, it's like the same thing over and over again. They could have cut it down a whole lot in my opinion, but just keep the stuff that's really vital to the story. At first, it felt like the the little stills where it's going back to Blackburn describing what's going on were really neat, and then it just kind of overplayed itself, and I got a little sick of it. But it didn't completely take me out of the film, which is the most important thing. I would probably rate this like a 2 out of 5, <laughs> 2.5 out of 5. I thought that this is a completely unique perspective, so I will give points for that for sure. I thought the locations they used were really good. I thought the filming itself was really, really good. Maybe some of the acting wasn't great, but I wasn't sure if it was supposed to have that, that feel to it that a lot of Grindhouse 70s movies do, where it's not really convincing acting, or if this was an accidental thing put in it. So I can't really say one way or the other, but as you guys know, if you've seen other reviews that I've done with child actors in particular, they're either really good 
or they're really bad. There's really no gray area with that. And unfortunately, the child actors in this did fall in the really bad section for me. They weren't very convincing. But again, that could be, you know, just how they wanted the movie part of it to seem in this. It sounds really confusing, but if you watch it, it will make sense. But have you guys seen this movie? Have you watched the trailer? Have you seen any other creature features that are Bigfoot-esque or what is it? The Legend of Boggy Creek? Let me, don't, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. Don't forget to hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. You can like the video if you did like the video or you could like the video if you like creatures with three toes. You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator, and my reviews, hello, speaking of three, three-footed things, yep, three-legged cat, meow, you can find my reviews and podcast form on iTunes, thank you so much to the Farsighted Network, please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content. And I think that about wraps it up. See you later, guys.